each of us as individuals has an expanded notion of what our protections and rights are. Things that we uh, take as uh, First Amendment guarantees today would never have been thought of necessarily, let's say, in 1808 or 1809 as protected. We just, it's, it's a different world. But as well, has to do with categories of people who get included now in those protections. Most obviously, uh, the move from of slavery to freedom uh, in the 19th century, and then the move towards uh, uh, women's rights in the 20th century. In the 19th century, the, the ideology that would have produced that episode is an ideology which says that women uh, are biologically, you know, maybe we should preface that by saying, in a pseudo-biological sense, unfit for a whole host of things, largely other than being mothers and uh, uh, running households. Ironically, that same ideology gets tweaked and turned around and used precisely as a way of advancing the cause of women in politics, which is to say that uh, by the late 19th and early 20th century, everybody agrees that politics is corrupt and it's a, it's a sewer. Well, that's because men are corrupt and, and are, are lousy human beings. So the way to clean up our politics is to allow women who are more morally virtuous, who are pure and uncorrupted, into our politics, and they'll make it better. So that becomes the persuasive argument for at least some people to allow women the right to vote. Uh, and uh, so it's, 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 it's a funny way these ideas of 19th century womanhood get, get reshaped in the early 20th century.